Now, now, I, I know that there's a lot of controversy in a lot of different camps around the purpose for gathering right now. I know that we don't necessarily all agree or aren't exactly aligned about whose lives matter for how long and to what degree. I understand that we live in a city that does not value black lives. And do you know how I know that? I know that because they call the African American population in New, Mexican, in New Mexico a statistically insignificant demographic. Are you insignificant? No. No, but that's what they call us though. So, so to what degree, to what extent, and for how long does your black life matter in New Mexico? Well, I'm gonna tell you something. I've been setting things on fire out here, setting little fires and letting light and smoke and bringing flowers and bringing joy and beauty and calling in the spirit of the ancestors because they are why we are here. See, we are a part of a very problematic story. We weren't here first, so much respect to the indigenous peoples, the first people of this land upon whose land we stand and gather here today. I stand in honor and reverence right, right. with the prayer of forgiveness on my heart and asking permission to speak. So to those indigenous elders in the audience, I ask you for permission to speak. May I speak? Amen. To my black elders in the audience, in the crowd, under the sound of my voice this evening, I stand in honor and reverence of your survival. I respect your aged wisdom. I respect the battles that you fought. I respect the fact that we couldn't march in the streets saying Black Lives Matter with masks on our faces at one point in time when our great-great-grandmothers walked this earth and came to these, this country in 1619 in chains. So I say to you, may I speak, aunties and uncles? Okay, somebody said no. <laughs> um, so I wanna share something with you. It's a poem that I wrote. I wanna talk to you real briefly though about why I wrote this poem. So remember how I told y'all about the statistically insignificant demographic? Are y'all still with me? Say word. Word. Okay, just checking. Remember how I told you about the statistically insignificant demographic? BS. So of that, of that 45,000 or so African Americans that were counted or counted themselves as African American and checked that box on the census, about 22,000 of them were female or black women. No designation is still made available for our non-binary brothers and sisters, okay? Our kinfolk, right? Our gender non-conforming humans that we love too, our trans brothers and sisters who we love and respect whose lives matter too, right? All the time, because can't none of us get free until the most oppressed and marginalized among us are free? Understand me when I say can't nobody get free? White people, you too are oppressed under this system of white supremacy. Just because it has your racial identification in the title don't mean it's for you. Just so you know everybody is oppressed understand there's just different degrees of that oppression and currently our brothers and sisters who identify as trans or non gender non-conforming and non-binary are at the farthest end of that margin and they are dying and no one is paying attention their black trans lives matter so until they get free can nobody get free so i'm sorry if your homophobic massage in the war doesn't fit in my revolution i apologize you can get down or you can lay down but you can't get free So I want you to know that while you're talking about being a part of a movement, oh, yeah. while you're changing your Facebook profiles to black fists, while you're out here marching with signs that say BLM, just make sure you capitalize the B in black all the time. It's black with a capital B, okay? And we earned that capital. It took two years after Abraham Lincoln signed the Emancipation Proclamation for news to make it to Galveston, Texas, that indent that slaves were free, that freedom had come. And do you know, y'all, not everybody walked off the, the plantation. A lot of y'all ain't ready to walk off the plantation. Oh, a lot of you ain't ready. But I want
want you to know they weren't already in 1865 either. But guess what? We got love for you on this side of the movement. We got love for you black with a capital B folks. We got love for you white folks who really love black folks. Not black appendages, but black people. Right. Oh, black mothers. Damn. Black women who birthed this whole thing, y'all. <laughs> So you can continue to attempt to erase and the movement ain't never gonna feel right. It ain't gonna fit right until you capitalize that B and put women at the center. Do you understand me? It's not gonna work right. Your movement ain't gonna quite curl over like a bad perm. It ain't gonna do it I mean. until you make the proper adjustments in yourself. Until you identify with your ancestors. Hey, the ones that you didn't, didn't like, Maybe you did have some ancestors who owned slaves, white folks. Maybe you didn't. He perhaps could have been an overseer. Maybe he wasn't wealthy enough to own slaves. But I guarantee you he was white enough to be racist. It was legal enough to lynch black men. Let me tell you something. Ain't no black men climbing up in no trees in Central Park across the street from no city house functioning buildings and committing what is so-called suicide. I promise you that. Oh, I promise you. It is 2020 and black people are being lynched on television, on our smartphones, in our devices. Our children are afraid to go outside. We have been locked outside, inside and confined to wear masks. This is still happening, folks. So which side of the movement is you gonna get on? How much do you love black people? Black people, don't let New Mexico make you hate yourself. Right. Don't let anti-blackness make you hate yourself. Right. Don't you let a fair-skinned family member make you hate yourself. Fair-skinned family members, don't you let a light, white-passing family member make you hate your melanin. It is God-given. Our ancestors bled and died for it today. For me to stand here on this microphone and say whatever I feel like saying, as guided by the spirit of my great, great, great grandmother, Cleo Stapleton, I ain't come to play with y'all tonight. It's high stakes out here. It's high stakes out here. It's high stakes. The babies are watching. The youth are watching, they need mentors, they need leaders, they don't need your whole old high school competitions. Your high school petty games you playing around in leadership positions, the youth don't need that, they can't do nothing with it. I recommend you build a bridge and get over that beef so that we can continue to move forward together in unity, in community, in love. It's gonna take love. That's the only answer. The only way to fix this is love. That is true. So y'all gonna put a capital on this B, do you understand me? Because black women, we out here. All right? So the next time you see a black woman, smile at her. Black women, next time I see you and smile, damn it, smile back, sis. What up the hell? Period. We are all going through the same thing. When I see you and tell you you look cute, it's because I'm excited to see you because you have no idea how many of y'all go through a whole week and don't see no other black people besides the ones that live in your house or yourself or are, if you were the only one of yourself all the time, that shit is hard. It's hard. We don't have to do that to each other. We don't have to participate in our own demise. That is the system working for uh, it, it itself. We become the batteries that fuel this fucked up system of white supremacy. Right. Excuse my language, but it's broken. It's always been broken. They want us to do the work for them at this point. And we must resist the inclination to do so. And the answer, the solution to every problem you are facing is love. And it starts with loving yourself first. Loving yourself harder than you thought your mama should have. Loving yourself harder than your daddy didn't. Loving yourself harder than the last person that broke your heart. Loving yourself harder than the last failure or mistake. Loving yourself harder than any single imperfection because you are perfect and divine in God's eyes and were created as such and always will be and can't nobody take that from you.